What's going on, boo babes? We are back with season two, episode two. And today we've got an extra special treat for you with ways to make you feel sexy and confident in the bedroom. Mm. It's time to grab your boobs and tune in. Now let's get to it. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to edit and record your podcast right from your computer or your phone. Anchor will even distribute your podcast for you so you can hear it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that. You can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership required. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. are back you guys with episode two of season two i am the one and only boo blogger bay and i'm here as always with my sissy kb <laughs> that what up kb in the house you know starting off with vagina events my week i've been all right this week because i've been off work i actually took up a little mini vacay as you call it i didn't do anything in particular just took a week off work. You know, it was nice. It's cool, calm, cope aesthetic. I can't complain. I've never done that. I've never taken a week off <laughs> in the history of me working. However, uh-huh. I enjoyed uh-huh. it. I needed to relax. I now see the importance of taking vacation time uh-huh. because my mental is clear. So I, you know, I really enjoyed it. And it was Bay's birthday, so... We spent so much needed Bay time together. So shout out to Bay on that. Happy birthday. Nah, that's what's up though. I mean, like you said, um, mental health is important. And that includes taking time out for yourself and not running yourself ragged. Because I promise you, you're just a number. No matter how much they say, oh my God, we fucking love you. That's oh, right. right. At the end of the day, they will find some way to replace your ass, even if they yes, have all they genuine do. intent. So you got to take care of yourself. I'm glad true, that you did that. Indeed. True indeed, I'm glad you, you know? Yeah, me too, man. I can honestly say, like, I feel better, you know? <laughs> I got to do some some stuff I ain't know I needed the time to do. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but that's... I'm yeah. happy to hear it. Indeed, sure. indeed. How has your weeks or two weeks been? So mine has been quite a whirlwind, but... But I'm not mad at it. I am excited. Everything that I'm asking for, everything that I had manifested and was putting into manifestation anyway, Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. wanted to happen is almost like fast track. It's it's almost, it's it's supernatural, which is awesome. But yeah, it's been a lot. Let's see. I think I talked about my new position, my new job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going really well. My initial first couple of days, I felt very overwhelmed. I didn't know what I was doing. It was a lot. Yeah, that's always how you feel in a new position, though. Mm-hmm. Like, but, you just um, be so out of it, but... Yeah, for sure. It. Yeah, but, I mean, that's what it is. Within the two weeks of me being in my role, I am starting... I'm already in a, 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 a higher... Not a higher position, but a different mindset already. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I'll be leading the meetings now and everything else. So it's just like... It's fun. It's a new yeah. challenge. And it's actually something cool. So I'm good. I, um, I know I'm like a good a good cleanse. I, one of my coworkers told me about Clean Juice. This is a company called Clean Juice. Mm-hmm. And they have like different cold pressed juices that you can try. They have different cleanses. She was like, oh my gosh, you have to try it. And I was like, yeah, all right, why not? So I'm trying it, trying it out. So far, it's not that bad, actually. Now, I'm not going to lie. The first cleanse has like this juice. It's called... It's, Sweet green, green, gold, uh, yellow. Mm-hmm. They have that's what they that's how they categorize it. But like the sweet green has kale in it, apple, okay. 
something like that. But then the green green has celery, kale, and something else. Yeah, uh-uh. When I seen that, uh, <laughs> so see when you when you walk around the health block a couple of times, you know what taste is is not your thing. Celery right, right, not right. Anything with celery in it, I don't care. I don't want it. Celery, celery plus is kale. An acquired taste, like you gotta mm-hmm. be mentally aware that you're about to drink mm-hmm. celery. Yeah, because celery is just not. It wasn't right, and so <laughs> I just. So as soon as I seen that little ingredient in there, and it was like, oh, we suggest that you do it as is. You can switch out. You can switch them out however you want to, but we do recommend mm-hmm. that you do it as is. I said, that's that's cool. I don't want to drink that green one, though. Let me get another sweet green. And that would be the only one yeah, I Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't gotten to the beet. I'm actually doing it today, so that's funny. Okay. But I haven't. I'm so not I have a been, fan of beets. But I see beets are a hit or miss for me. I like them. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a beet burger, and it was good. But then I had... What is it? Strings or it was some kind of way the beef were prepared. It was trash. Mm-hmm. I was like, nah, this is nasty. Pickles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it pickles? It was something, something like that. It was something weird. I don't know. Either way, I was like, nah, this is not good. So um, I'm gonna try to beat juice, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. But you know, I like a good cleanse, like the next. Yeah, week. you gotta keep me up on that because I, like I said, I am not. I mean, completely against beets. If I see it on the menu, take it out. <laughs> I can't do it. Mm-mm. Yeah, but it's all good though. Other than that, I'm good. I am not uh, not even other than that, including that. I'm good. I am blessed. I'm happy. He's gonna keep it. He's gonna keep it pushing. <laughs> keep saying why. I like the sound of that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Can now argue with positivity. Okay. <laughs> you did. And you know, keeping the positive vibes going. We are gonna jump into this good boob news report. So, I don't know if, if if y'all remember, but season one, we talked about Regina King debuting her first directorial movie, One Night in Miami. Well, we did tell y'all we was going to keep y'all up on the news with that. It has finally made it to Amazon Prime. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, when I say it's big time, as soon as you log into Amazon Prime, it's right there. <laughs> Came in. I like how it's depicted in segregation times. Mm-hmm. So you kind of see the rise of each person's career. So it talks about Cassius Clay, it talks about Malcolm X, um, it talks about Sam Cooke, it talks about Jim, who's a football player, Jim Brown, back in the 1960s. So it's at the beginning of their career, but we were still in segregation times. So even in all their fame, they still were treated as black men. Uh And it's crazy because, you know, now fame is everything. You know what I mean? Like, if you got money in your pocket or if you got a million Instagram followers, people think you, you know, you the shit. Uh But in all their glory and all their fame and all their money, they still were like, nah, you can't come in here, you black. But we love you, though. Uh (laughs) It's still that dynamic of, I mean, even to this day, sometimes you still get it with I know of my own brother, he plays for Virginia Tech. So whenever he gets stopped by the police or something, he's always, you know, quick to mention, you know, I play for Virginia Tech and the whole dynamic of the conversation changes. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the movie focuses on. You know what I mean? Like how I have to be giving you something substantial for you to treat me differently. And that's that that was major. Yeah. Because it's not even because... Who, which one was, was it? Was Sam Cook? I can't remember which one said it, but it was. It's not even just the fact that, like, like you said, I'm giving you something substantial. It's not. It's not even that. It's just the fact that, oh, you're the you're entertainment, so you're one of the quote unquote not elite, but you're the different kind. Like you're 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 okay. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes that can go completely different because then you're famous and you're known. So to yeah. some people, it's like, oh, okay, hey, you're. You know, it's fun. Go ahead and dance for me, little nigga. That's good. But then there's somebody else like, oh, you're an uppity nigga. You think you're good just because you can sing, mm-hmm. just because you can dance, just because you can write something. And, you know, they feel some type of way because they are poor. They are this. They feel like they're entitled exactly. to whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was good. I, I definitely suggest that if you haven't yes, seen it, definitely. please go see it. Please. Yes, for real, um, for real. It's on Amazon Prime. Check it out. If you don't have Amazon Prime, hit somebody up for their password. You did? You know. You want to have a live discussion? Let's do a live discussion about it. Yeah, I think that would be good. Like a little movie review kind of thing? 
Y'all let us know if y'all want to do a live discussion. Once this drops, we'll we'll keep a poll. If y'all want to do a live discussion on that, almost like a book club. We'll we'll yes, choose like that. Because <laughs> it's neat on this one. It's neat. It's needed, for sure. and that's what I'm saying. Because there's a lot of things that you can break down in it, like a, a lot. And then me, just being a type of person I am, I look at stuff so deep, like like even the movie Soul. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. We're talking about something completely different. Don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna get us too sidetracked. But even the movie Soul, I was like. Yo, it's a lot of deep shit in this movie that I think is going over a lot of people's head. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. oh, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff. So, yeah. So, so yeah. Shout out to Regina King again. I know. She's always <laughs> like, my favorite. Like, she do the damn thing. She does. Like, I've always loved her. So. Like, in everything. She just kills it. And like she's her, low-key. Exactly. Her and Issa Rae. Like, I yeah. love oh. Issa Rae. Yes, now Issa hurt my heart this past week when she announced <laughs> that it was going to be the last season of Insecure. Like, mm. my little feelings was hurt. I felt like I was going through a bad breakup or something. However, like, I had mixed emotions because I, it was kind of like, damn, because I, um, I ain't gonna lie. I am not up on the new season. Don't judge me. Don't talk about me. I have a lot of things <laughs> in my life. Okay. But, <laughs> but, but even with that, it's kind of like every good story has to come to an end. And I think that sometimes, yeah, I think sometimes certain uh, shows, they lost their like classic feel or or like they lost it and they lost their audience. Because mm-hmm. they, they kept going. They kept going and it didn't make sense. Like, like yeah. even yeah, some, mo- yeah, like even some, see- like some shows who have cult followings is really like, if you listen to them, they always say, oh yeah, I watch it over and over again. But, I stop it at this certain season. So mm-hmm. why? Because <laughs> because that that it didn't make sense. The character development would drop, or the line, the the storyline didn't make sense anymore. So yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you have to find true. something else to do with your life. But nah, don't drag it out. Don't be the dead horse. It don't make sense. Let the thing. I go. mean, it, but it did. It did make sense for her life point, like. Mm-hmm. I did find out, okay, that they always plan to end it at season five. And okay. I did not know that when they started Insecure as like a TV show or it got picked up by HBO. I never knew that it was slated to always end at season five. However, oh, cool. looking at, yeah, like looking at what she's accomplished and where she's going in life, you kind of could see that she would be too busy to really give it the attention that she's been giving it. So, it would kind of drift off and get boring. Mm-hmm. And rather than have it do that, just mm-hmm. end it. And yeah. I get it. Hell yeah. I'm I definitely you. get it. Get off of it while you can. Right. Like, at least she's leaving it at a classic moment where we can still say, hey, I see the relation. I see, you know, like we're yearning for more, mm-hmm. although we'll never, we'll never get that more to it. Rather than drag it out and be like, oh, man, this should have been cut off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, so I get it. I definitely understand. But shout out to Issa for giving us Insecure for five you seasons. Because I'm definitely going to hit the reruns <laughs> a billion times. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's And again, I think this Insecure has a has a great, great, great put, like potential if it doesn't already have this, a cult following. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to have oh, yeah, people for who sure. watch it um, over and over again. Or who can watch it and... Or talk about it and still have little one liners and punchlines and all kind of other stuff where you have to be you have to be an insecure fan to get it. Right. So right, I get right, it. Right. I definitely agree with that. I definitely mm-hmm. agree with that. Which you is know, good. We need got... some black shows like that. We do. I mean we do. We need we really some. do. Some newer ones. Don't get me wrong, we have our old classics, but we need some newer classics if that makes I if that yes, makes we sense. Do. <laughs> like we need some of those. Especially right now, because ain't nobody, you know, she filled that void for a while. Like it was mm-hmm. just her. So now that she's leaving, it's like, all right, y'all come with some new, new. Mm-hmm. For sure. We need it, especially with everybody sitting at home for COVID. So come That's on with it. That's what it is. That's what it is. Come That's, on with it. I think everybody got a chance to binge this go around. <laughs> oh, if you didn't binge, I don't know what she was doing. I mean, besides reading, because I'm a reader. As I so, say, I read a lot. <gasps> Speaking I of reading, read DG, what's that? Do you know who passed away? Yes, Eric Jerome Dickey, and bro, I was so bro, hurt, bro. So let me I tell you. Was so, hurt. so look, so my favorite, right? She hit me up and she was like, 
I got it. Uh, she know we were talking or whatever. And I was talking about books. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do whatever. And, you know, I'm still writing my book and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, ooh, I want to tell you something, but I don't want to tell you something, but I don't want you to see it anyplace else. <laughs> and I was like, what? What's going on? And then she was like, somebody passed away, but it's not a family member, but it's like mm-hmm. a friend of the family. And I said, right. oh, shit. Right, who is it? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> and then she told me, oh, but when she told me, I was hurt because I was for real hurt. And I, I went down the whole line. I said, Bo, do you not know? I have literally read, if not every book, damn near every book. I think I, I think I maybe, maybe have not read one or two books, like sparingly. And if it's a book, and if for, it's not, for, real. for real, and if it's not, and if I didn't read something, it's not that I didn't read one of his books. You know how he would do one mm-hmm. of the, those other kind of books where he would do it with other people or he would be like a... Yeah. A, yeah, like one the, of those. Like they pair up and write a, a, yeah. a story together. Like it's from the female perspective, then from the male perspective. And, yeah, all of yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. Or when they have like the little joined up little short stories in one book, it's something like mm-hmm. that. I promise you, whatever Ari Jerome Dickey wrote, your girl had it. And yep. really, like, and, and this has been years. One of the longest relationships I've ever had. Yeah. So and I, I said the same thing, I like sissy, no lie, no cap. I, I got a text message from my brother and he was like, Yo, I hope you're sitting down for this one. And I was like, Yo, what? I was like, Do I need to have a plane? You know, I'm immediately thinking the worst of the worst. And I was like, I I was like, what is it? You know, he was like, one of your favorite authors is not here no more. And I was just like, yo, it 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 can't be with so many people because mm-hmm. I was like, Omar Tyree's already gone. So mm-hmm. and that one hurt I was my like, too. I was like, yo, who is it? And he was like, Eric Jerome Dickey. I immediately stopped because I was driving. I stopped, I pulled over, and I looked it up to make mm-hmm. sure it was factual information because I didn't believe it. Mm. I didn't believe it. Hell? No, it's not Omar Tyree that's gone. It's Elan Harris. Mm-hmm. Elan Harris. It's Omar. Omar, Omar gone Omar. too? Hold on, girl. Cause um, don't say that. Don't say Harris. Cause I didn't know Harris passed away. I thought it was Omar Tyree. Hold on, let's make sure. Cause I got. I think it's Elaine. I know Elaine Harris is gone, but I didn't know that. Yeah, Elaine Harris died a couple. He died a couple years back because he. Oh, got that is right. He died in two thousand and nine. Yeah. And I was sick about him. Omar Tyree has not died, and that's what I said. I said he don't need to die because I ain't got time. Right. Yes. 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 Okay. That's what I said. It's, oh, I'm so sorry, Omar. Look, I'm so sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, we're not trying to kill you off. I'm you so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's why I said no. It's not Omar. It's Elon Harris. Elon Harris died a couple years ago, mm. but well, more than a couple. But 2009. He's yeah. the one that passed, and his death also hit me hard because, like I said, I was really big on African American literature, mm-hmm. so. Him dying, and now you got Omar. Not Omar. I still keep saying Omar. Please stop. And now you got Eric, and I was just like, yo, I had every book in his collection. Like, he was so substantial to my sexual life that he, and he never knew it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the thing about it. Like, he contributed so much to me sexually just through his literature that, like, I didn't never even get to say nothing to him about it. You know, I don't know him personally, but I wanted you to. felt like you did through his mm-hmm. books and the way he wrote. And reading his his books continuously over time, like from middle school up until now, you you do feel a sense of connection. Mm. Dang, you really bro. do. Yeah, now, like seriously, like especially Eric Jerome Dickey, like out of all, well, no, nah, it's a couple more, but Eric Jerome Dickey was up there, like top, top. Like, yes. it was it was to the point at one point where people would just buy me books. Like, they'd be like, hey, I've seen this book and I wanted to see if you read it. Yeah, I've already read it already. Or like birthdays, Christmases. I'm getting books and I'm ecstatic. Like, I'm just like, exactly. Yes. Like, this is what I wanted. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, oh, like oh. you could give me an Eric Jerome Dickey book and a Zane book for my birthday and I'm complete. Completely. I'm the happiest person in America right now. Exactly. Oh my god. And that's how it went. But like, yes, I definitely heard about it. Definitely hit me hard. Like I said, it caught me off guard. I didn't even believe it. Mm-hmm. But you know, I can't say that he didn't live a good life. I can't say that his work won't be remembered. 
it won't be like it will be passed down to generations. Oh, for sure. And we'll always have what he did contribute, and that's his books. Mm-hmm. And you I know, that's our way of connecting. Yeah. And it's cool too, because it's like now I got the books that are now classics now. And I don't mm-hmm. have to go out and buy it because y'all about to be paying a grip for them. I'm not. <laughs> okay. I got Still all got the originals. I was about to say I got all the originals, paperback, and I got a couple of hardbacks. I'm talking. Yeah, right. <laughs> Back when they was eight dollars, sixteen dollars, and now you probably gonna be paying like forty five, fifty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yes, whole collection. Oh, yes, sir. But wow. you know, bringing it back to women mm-hmm. for this good boob news report, we gotta gotta shout out and big kudos, big ups to Kamala Harris, Vice mm-hmm. President Kamala Harris, for getting sworn in, for actually being dubbed the first woman Vice President, first. Black and Asian American vice president. You know, big ups to that. We are alive to see it. We are here to witness it. That's the cool part. You know, some people cried. And Mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, if you had an emotional moment, it was well deserved. And it Mm -hmm. was, it it doesn't even really need explanation in that moment because it has never happened before. And Mm -hmm. we're all, like I said, we're here to see it, not just tell the story. So, you know, embrace that time, you know, relish in this moment. Yeah. We, we owe it to ourselves as black women. Yeah, sure. As women, like, as women, then you put as black women, then you put as black women in 2000, anything. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like and then you put Facts. black women, I don't know, you put women, black women, living in 2000, then you put living in the U.S. of A. That's a lot. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot. So right. shout out to her for real. Vice President Harris, BP. Okay. <laughs> we in there. I loved it. We um, in this thing. I loved it. Did you watch the whole inauguration? Ethan, I didn't watch the whole inauguration. I caught bits and pieces because I had to do some, you know, some sticking and moving. Like I said, this was my off week. So mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of ripping and running, but I did catch like the highlighted point. I also caught, what do you call them? The, the Lorette, the poet? Huh? She was oh, 21 oh. Uh-huh. that did the inauguration. I don't know if you call it the Lord. Is it the laureate, the laureate? I don't know how to say the word. Mm-hmm. So y'all don't don't judge me. But she was 21, and she gave a phenomenal poet to open the inauguration ceremony. Uh, oh. She's the youngest to ever do it. Yeah, that chick. I know who you're yeah. talking about. I don't know what she's called, but I know what she's talking about. Yeah. Right? Like I don't. I can't remember the mm-hmm. official title. I remember seeing the word. I just don't know how to pronounce it. So. <laughs> Shout out to her as well. Like, black women, we doing the dang thing this year. Like, no holes barred. But we been doing the damn thing. Now that shit just shining on the outside for everybody else to see. That's what that is. It's true. It's That's true. That is very, 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 very true. There's a <laughs> lot of shit on the back end. What's funny is, it's a lot of things on the back end that people don't know. Black women had a uh, hella, had their hand on everything. Women had their hands on a lot of things. Black mm-hmm. women had their hands on a lot of things. Big facts. I mean, shit. People of color, bro. Like, I promise you, <laughs> we done built some shit. Like, the whole world. We done built the whole world. <laughs> the whole For real. World. We have shaped history in so many ways that we don't get uh, the credit for. That's because history was altered. That's what that is. It's not that. Oh, that yeah. Right. It's, not that it, it's not that we don't get credit for it. It's that, that we don't know to give credit for it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's different. It's a smidget different. It's a smidget, yep. but it's a smidget different. Because if you don't know, you know what I'm saying? How can you? How can, how you, can you tell the story if you don't know about it? Exactly. Yep. I say it all the time. <laughs> don't believe everything they tell you because everything they tell you ain't the truth. Come on now. Not at all. But you know, that's a, that, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> <laughs> we always topic. I'm not that's even going to get topic. into that today. <laughs> right. We're not going to get into that today because that's a long topic. We, I mean, that's a long discussion. Mm-hmm. Like, mm, ain't even going to do it. All right. Well, we can go ahead into feminine favor today. So it's a lot of things that I'm still learning. And I, I guarantee you, as I learn it, I'm going to share it with y'all so y'all can learn it too. Now, I do this, but I wasn't sure that everybody did this. So I'm just going to pass it along. Now, I moisturize my lady parts. And I say lady parts, I mean my vulva, because you don't need to do anything to your vagina. We have established that. Season one, play it back if you need to. But it is very important to moisturize your vulva. Like when you get out the shower, 
The same as when you wash your hair, you still add moisturizer to it. You got to hydrate it the same as you do your skin. You also have to do your vulva the same way. And a lot of people don't know that. Hmm. I wonder how you skip that part, though. You'd be surprised. Like, you'd really be surprised how many people don't know to still moisturize that area. Like, it grows hair. It's still skin on it. You know what I mean? It can dry out just like any other part of your body. Not saying your vagina. We're talking about your vulva, which is the outside skin, your lips. Like, you have to moisturize that area uh-huh. just as well as you do any other part of your body. But how do you miss that part? Like, how do you lotion your legs, like, body butter up your legs, and then you mess around that? You you just skip all of all the little, like, that, you, all of it. You just skip that whole... The thing. same way we uh-huh. had to tell people to wash their bottom leg and their feet in 2020. Uh, that's nasty. And then what about people who are ashy on their little webby part of their hand? Wow, oh, I can't stand that. Oh, I can't stand that, bro. God. That is like... That's a pet that peeve, is, and I didn't even know yes. it. I didn't know it was, yes. and, it, and it's sad that it is, but it is, because it's like, don't walk around on me talking about your... Like, how? 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 So you didn't put lotion on none of your body? Because ain't no way. None. <laughs> none. Baby, it's certain things I'm learning about myself I didn't even know. I was like, wow, you got to get it together, Keith, because... You can't live your life like this. You're going to be aggravated a lot. You got to let some shit go. <laughs> that's facts, though. That's big facts. Like, for real. For real. <laughs> but, like, no, seriously, like, I even, okay, as soon as I get out the shower, mm-hmm. I will put shea butter on my vulva. Mm-hmm. And I do this because your pores are open, so it absorbs most of the moisture at that time. You know, and to me, it makes me feel the softest in the area to just do it right after I get out the shower. Like, I dry off and immediately put on shea butter. That works for me. Mm. That may not work for everybody. You can use olive oil. You can use coconut oil. Whatever suits your skin is what you should use. I'm not saying use scented, because we all know scented down there in that area. Mm -mm. That irritation. But... If you use natural olive oil, natural coconut oil, natural shea butter, it actually helps to reduce the irritation of the skin, especially when you're on your cycle. Or when you, and even when you get, just got to pee, like something as simple as used in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. It will help you in the area because sometimes that burning that you feel, it may not be the inside of you. It may just be your skin. Hmm. Interesting. For real. That is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is good. Exactly yeah. my point. So some people don't know. We got to let them know. Nah, for sure. That's what feminine favors for. Damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Nah, that's what's up, though. I, um, I don't know. I never not moisturize down there. Like, I can't, I don't, again, I don't even like the little webby part of my hand to be actually, not for real, for real. Like, that's true. So it's just, mm-hmm. I don't know. I never not, I never not moisturize. I'm trying well, to see, I can't say that I always did it, though, because I was never taught to do it. Like, I was, adults see, did it? Uh-uh. Because I can't remember. Now, don't get me wrong. She may have told me, but I don't remember getting the lesson of it. Mm-hmm. But I do remember lotion up your body, get it right. You know what I'm saying? And it was just, yeah. okay, that's part of it. Like, <laughs> that, I guess that's what it is. It was like, I took that shit, literally. Lotion up your body. All right, nigga, well, from head to toe. That's everything. It we'll see me. with me having <laughs> extra so, sensitive skin. Like, oh, okay, I was okay, always gotcha. scared. Gotcha. Put it that way. It wasn't that, that I didn't know to do it because I like, no, I wasn't taught to do it, but I was always scared to because I was so sensitive oh, and a lot sense. of stuff would burn me in that area or a lot of stuff would irritate me to the point where I would get like, in infections. Yeah. Like it scared me out of using stuff. Gotcha. So I just stayed away from the area outside of washing it, period. Until yeah, adult right. me was just like, no, like let's, like, we need to, you know, get some natural stuff going on. And when I came into, like, the holistics of everything, I was just like, oh, okay, this does work. <laughs> you know, it's okay to yeah. use this. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, if it works, we're going to keep it going because it worked. <laughs> exactly. That's what's up, though. Yeah. Well, good lesson. Make sure you keep your yayas all nice and moisturized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Word, though. But you know, today we actually, for relations and situations, mm-hmm. we got a listener letter. 
Nice, nice. Nice, what's up? Let me go on and um, read this out to the people one time. All right, y'all, all right. So, I'm going to use a nickname, and we're going to say, we're going to call her Becky, okay? No real names. So, we're going to call this person Becky, all right? So, Becky says, so my man's family has treated me like shit for our entire relationship. I have caught all of them talking about me behind my back, calling me a whore, garbage, and many inappropriate things that I will not say. Even though they always disrespected me, I always respected them out of the fear for their their son, older brother. Mind you, every time I cried to my man about how rude they are, he made excuses for their behavior and asked me to be nice. I did that for a year, and then it escalated, and they all ganged up on me and told him that they wanted nothing to do with him until he left me and that I was garbage and a slut and everything in between. And if he wanted to stay in the family, he had to leave me. Months passed, and I blocked all of them except for the two young twins. And even then, they began to call me names and harass me through social media. And my man continues to call me childish for blocking them and a bitch for acting this way. Then his family turned around and started treating me, tr- started treating him as bad as they treated me. They said sorry to him and still not me. But here's the thing. He wants to have children. But I don't want our children to have anything to do with his family because of the way they have treated me. He calls me selfish for wanting to keep our children from his family when he knows they are toxic and he expects me to just up and forgive them. Are my feelings selfish? No. I'm, 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 I'm going to say hell no. <laughs> I'm like, like, no. Your feelings aren't selfish, but not even just that. This seems very toxic. Like, I've seen mm-hmm. I've seen a lot, a lot of people go through this. Like, a lot of people. And it's so sad. Like, I'm so thankful and, and blessed that I didn't have to go through this personally. Amen. But I've seen it. And it's not... It doesn't get better. And it doesn't nope. make the situation better. Because like you said, even though you're in love with this person and a lot of people, and what trips me out though, and I understand that this this may need to be a different discussion. I don't know. But people, when you're dating someone, you are dating their family. And mm-hmm. not to the sense where, and, and don't get me wrong, there's a thin line. People hear me out. I'm not saying that the overbearing mother or the two needy sister needs to be in your life and interrupt right. that kind of thing. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is though, like her, his family being that nasty to you and, and all mm-hmm. this other stuff, that's not a good situation for your health, for your mental. Nope. The fact that your man is not sticking up for you, baby girl, I understand that's, that's a sign. Family. That's a sign right there. Because even mm-hmm. if he's like, even if he's like, oh yeah, I still want to be with you. Yeah, this is what I I want. And whatever the case may be, if he can't sit there and say, hey, moms, look, no disrespect, because your mom's, this is my woman, though. This is who I'm trying mm-hmm. to deal with. If he can't do that, then baby girl, you don't have a background. Let him go. And that's not that's not good. It's, it's different. Like, again, I can have, I can be in a relationship. Let's say, let's say my partner, was, um, mother was overbearing or something like that. Mm-hmm. You got to be like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Whew, I got a mommy's baby. Like, I need to figure it right. out. Even that's a lot. Right. Okay. That's, that's a lot because I'm a mommy's baby. So I get it because I call my mama every day. With the, let 24 hours go past and I call my mama, uh, what the fuck? What the hell happened to you? So I get that part, but don't get me, but don't get it twisted. My mama not crazy. Hey, I'm over here with my partner. We're doing our thing. You good? All right, cool. Peace. <laughs> you exactly. Gotta, you got to establish those boundaries. Be so yes, family will always be your family. You always put family no? first. Yes, that is correct. However, whenever you branch off from the family that you were born into to meet another partner so that way y'all two can build and create a family, once you make that, once you make that distinction, like yo, I want this person to be in my life because the goal is supposed to be creating another family, right? I want mm-hmm. this person to be in my life to bear my kids, to do whatever, blase, blase. You're now taking over the role of protecting her, yeah. them, whoever, protecting, providing, being that person. That is now your family. So if that is your family, what the hell? Why would you let anyone disrespect them? Let alone that exactly. kind of mental warfare. So no, nah, that's very toxic. Your fa- your feelings are more than valid. If anything, you need to reevaluate it a little bit more. I don't know your day to day and your every day with this man, but I guarantee you, 
the family aspect of it, if it doesn't weigh you down now, which it sounds like it is, it's going to be hell later on because y'all talking yes, about kids is. and marriage. Ain't no way. Who the fuck wants to have a yes, fight at is. the wedding? Who the hell is going to say, no, nah, you can't go see your grandmama? What? Like nobody wants exactly. that type of relationship. So if you can't establish that type of relationship now, if you're already saying, nah, if I have kids, your mama can't be a part of them. What kind of bullshit is that? So now it why would you, you even want to bring kids in? Exactly. So why would you yep. want to bring kids into that type of situation? You're not bringing them into anything healthy. Just like you wouldn't want to date a man who's strongly on drugs because you feel like that's not going to be a good idea. Then why the mm-hmm. fuck would you bring your kid into a toxic situation knowing that your, the fam don't like you? Like that's exactly. not, that, that's not anything. Because that's not conducive for- to your mental health. Mm-mm. Because heaven forbid, let something happen to you. Do you really think that they're going to take, I mean, not saying anyone's going to do anything wrong to your kids. I would never say that. But at the same time, you can't dislike me and then like something that's a product of me. I don't give a fuck exactly. who you are. <laughs> like, what? Exactly. Not saying that you're going to do harm to the kid, but are you really going to love them with all of your, mm-hmm. if you know that some of me is sprinkled in that but, but really though, like, you are really looking over your shoulder trying to make sure they're not harming the kid just because the kid is, is tied to you. Exactly. Because and you know how they treat you. And even if they never do anything against your kid or to your kid, what are they saying about you to your kid? Mm-hmm. How are they treating you in front of your kid? So now your kid is yeah. confused, like, hey, mom, why, why don't you leave just sit there and just smack the shit out of you? What, what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. Or why y'all can't never be in the same room together? Exactly. Or why she always talking down about you? Like, exactly. Yeah, it gets real. Hey, mom, what's a like, hussy? Because auntie said you was a hussy. Like, nobody exactly. want to have that conversation. The fuck? Nah, definitely not with your own child about mm-hmm. somebody else. You definitely don't want to have that conversation. Like, oh, I've been in this situation, and it wasn't that who I was with parents didn't like me, but my parents didn't like who I was with. And I was the boyfriend in, in this situation where it's kind of like you're stuck in the middle and you don't know which way to go because... You can correct that per you know, you can correct that person in your family and say, Hey, this is who I'm with. But if that person still chooses to act that way towards that, you know, towards who you with, you can't control it at that point. And it's a tough mental spot to be in for everybody. And mm-hmm. like I like like we said, it, it won't get better. Uh-uh. It won't get better. Like I haven't I've been in rare situations where I've actually seen the situation get better, you know, with people sitting down and talking it out. Nah, and actually exactly. coming to an agreement on things, it does mm-hmm. happen, but it's very rare. Gotcha. Like most times, it just you just got to end the relationship because it's not good for anybody involved. Mm-hmm. But and then my thing is, if your love is that damn strong and deep, that's when you got to let it be known. Look, mom, this is for real. You love me, right? I'm I'm mm-hmm. your kid. I'm letting you know as much as I love you, I really, really love this person. And even if it's a mistake. You as my mother, I just need you to love me through all of my mistakes. And if this is one of them, then just love me through it because I want this person. That's what the conversation should be. If that's not the conversation but you're see, having, no, it's okay. different for me. But see, I because mean, even I with having that, mm-hmm. my mom, my mama, at that point, she still won't willing to change her actions or attitude toward that person. Even was, with having that conversation like two, three times. But it was still put out there, though. At least the the, oh, yeah. the expectations of what you wanted and what you stood for was out there. It sounded like bro man was just like, hey, man, you know how my people are, bro. They just they just playing. You know, good goddamn well, they ain't playing. That is true. Girl. Now that's different. Don't wave it off and, and try to di- and then he even uh from the letter, it sounds like it was more or less minimizing your feelings to make you feel like you crazy. I don't give a fuck how strong I am. I'm still a person. I don't give a fuck how exactly. I don't care if you've never seen me cry in the three years that we've been together, bitch. I still have feelings. Like, don't try to I hate because I am that strong person, no matter wh- which relationship you're talking about, don't make it seem like just because I am strong and I do, you see me fall a couple of times and get get the fuck right back up and keep running. That doesn't mean that you can keep putting shit on me and thinking that it's okay. So no, don't mm-hmm. make me that woman, that our listener, uh literally has a whole other situation outside of this. Whenever I'm coming yeah, to my real. partner, whenever I'm coming home, that's my peace. That's my bubble. Why the fuck am yeah. I fighting with you and your family? Why the f- I don't feel protected. I, I I know me personally. I know I'm probably putting a lot of words into this listeners, uh, like in their mouths, so to speak, because they didn't necessarily say this. But mm-hmm. I would be damned if my partner didn't make me feel protected. Why are we here? And that's not even a masculine thing or feminine thing. That's, oh, that's real. That's overall because. Yeah, I, exactly because 
I, me being a female, I protect my partner. And by the way of, hey, baby, I'm gonna show you all this kind of love. If somebody hurting my partner, you better damn damn see it. I'm sharpening up my knives and my tools too. It, it, it's the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. I'm here to protect you, love. But you know, me. if you even, but even like, if you don't protect your partner in that sense, and you don't say anything, that says a lot about the love you have for your partner too. That means exactly. that a lot is broken in that relationship to where you don't feel the need to do that. Mm-hmm. And so that, that in itself is another issue that y'all need to resolve between just the two parties involved in the relationship. <laughs> because if I can't stand up and protect you or if I can't go against family, not even go against, but just speak to family and say, hey, this is who I'm with. This is who I choose to be with. Y'all just going to have to deal with it even if it don't last. You know, right now, this is, this is where I'm at. Mm-hmm. If you can't stand up and say that and feel right in saying that, then that's mm-hmm. an issue in your relationship. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes the conversation needs to be had. Like, again, I'm a very strong individual. Sometimes a motherfucker may not think to ask, hey, you good? Because I always look good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes you just need to ask that person whether they look good or not. Yo, you all right? Because a motherfucker oh, yeah. is not going to tell oh, yeah. you they all right or not. Now, and you know what? I lied a little bit and I didn't mean to. It's not that my people didn't like this individual. I was I was talking to someone. I don't even want to say that we were dating yet. I was talking to someone. Mm-hmm. But I had knew him from my past. So I was like, yo, I feel like me, you, okay, let's go ahead and try something. So uh, right. what happened? He didn't meet my people, but he met, <laughs> he didn't met like my parents, but he met like my people. Like it was almost right, like a pre-run right. kind of thing. <laughs> um, right, like you was testing the water. Exactly, because I don't bring nobody around anybody. Matter of fact, the partner don't wear right now, that's the only motherfucker who's been around people for real, for real. Other than that, I ain't, I ain't fuck with you niggas. So, yeah. so, so, like, yeah. <laughs> so I brought this person around, like my my folk or whatever, and they was like, "Oh no, uh-huh. we don't like him." And I was like, "Oh, well, hold up now, but well, why? <laughs> but why?" Yeah. And it was. And I mean, I, you always get asked why. Exactly, but the reason they gave me was some bullshit in my mind, and I was like, "Okay, well, look, I'm gonna fuck with him, and if I bring him around, I don't expect you to be rude or anything else like that. You can keep your opinion. I don't have to sway it." But you will be respectful mm-hmm. to my company. And that's another thing. People feel like you got to be kumbaya and shit. Nah, we don't have to. No, nah, you don't. But you would respect me, motherfucker. Yes. Like, especially if I didn't do anything to you. So you can be cordial. You can be respectful. We ain't even got to talk for real. We don't have to talk, but you don't have to be rude. So if there's five people in the goddamn line and I'm standing next to the fourth person, bitch, you speak to me too. But, if, but other than mm-hmm. that, <laughs> we ain't got to talk. We ain't got to kick it. But you don't have to be disrespectful. You don't have to call me out my name. I have a name. My mother wrote it down on the birth certificate. Would you like for okay. me to give you the phonetic a pronunciation? Because I'm telling you, I don't like disrespect. I'm getting mad thinking about it. Look, if you don't, if don't, you, don't get mad. Don't get mad. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, because I don't like, I don't like disrespect, and I don't like hearing people being disrespected because that's bullying. And I've always been yeah. a bully to the it bullies. Is. Like I remember being in school, being in arguments and fighting people who were bullies to other people because I didn't like that. So people looking at me like, oh, you fighting? Yeah, because fuck, did you hear what she just said to that man? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, I yeah. never, ever like that. I never like that, ever. So, and I mean, in this situation, you definitely, you definitely see that she's being bullied. Like a and that's why I say I can understand the mentality of it because I've been in that situation before where you feel, you feel like nothing you do will satisfy anybody else in the situation. And you don't only, you ain't even done nothing wrong. Right. You just was you, you know, and they just don't like you because it could be reasons that you, beyond you could not even directly be you. Right. You know, it's just that they don't like your presence. And that's why I said the the ultimate goal here is that you're going to have to step away from the situation mm-hmm. in order to find peace with it. Because from the looks of it, from what was sent in in the letter, it's not going to get any better anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And I definitely wouldn't bring a child into it. Mm-mm. Hell no. That's only going to complicate And I mean, if you're pregnant now, then, you know, I. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, if you're already pregnant, I don't know what to say. Look, I. I, say. I, I mean, I don't, not pushing on nobody, but I'm just saying, you got options. But still, <laughs> but even with that. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> Look, JK, JK, JK. <laughs> word though, word though. But for real, no. but for real. For That's real. funny. I think the best advice for real is to step away. For real. Like, and when I say step away, you don't necessarily have to break up with old boy right now, but step away. Give yourself a week, a, a week or two. You know what I'm saying? Not talking to him. Definitely not talking to his fucking family. Not, not even talking to your homegirl. Don't talk to your... Right. This is a mistake a lot of people make. 
when you having an issue in your relationship, don't talk to your homegirls. Not off real. Sit with it no, by yourself. No, please don't. Sit with the situation please by yourself don't. for a minute and just and meditate on it. Think about it. Write it down for a minute. Look at the situation in the whole from your perspective. All of that kind of shit. Because your homegirls, as much as they love you, some of them are trifling. But the ones who are real... Or they could be jealous and you yeah, don't know it. exactly. But the ones Anything. who are real, that you don't want anybody voice in your head. And I always tell my friends this when they come to me, look, I'll give you my opinion, but at the end of the day, you got to sit with it because you don't need my voice and nobody mm-hmm. else is in it. You got to go with And it's your life. For you you got to do what's best for you. Period. But if you, now if you chill for a week and you see and feel a whole different type of peace around you, then baby girl, you got your answer. You ain't. You don't need nothing. Okay. <laughs> you got like, it. Like you don't need nothing. You good. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Trust me. That, but that, that's that's the whole. Look, like we can go on that for days. For real. Go on that for Cause even if it's good, I promise you, you can find another one and then train them up right, girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not even that. It's it's more fish in the sea. Like mm-hmm. stop being stuck on that one person because the sex good. Like go out there and explore. Like it's other people with good sex. Mm-hmm. And different shaped penises. Okay. Like stop being afraid <laughs> to get out there. That ain't that. You don't have to ever settle. <laughs> Understand that. Never, you ever. don't have to ever settle. For shit, because they sell all the penises at the sex store. They got all <laughs> the penises, all different sizes. <laughs> Shapes and variations, yes. They, they got do. the veiny ones, the little mushroom ones. <laughs> the thick ones. <laughs> that one with that mean hook in it. But she was like, ooh, how that thing it is? <laughs> yes, for real, for real. Have you ever met somebody with a mean ass hook on them? And you'd be like, nigga, how you gonna insert that? Like, is it gonna go like to like uh base first? <laughs> Oh my God! No, I've had one that I couldn't even put in myself. Like mm. you, like during a masturbation session, mm. it was so big that I was just like, "Fuck it, oh, I'm nah. not gonna ever use it." Mm-mm. Like I couldn't do it. It was just too big because I ordered it. Mm-hmm. I ordered it based off the description. Oh, okay. You know, they was like, "It's nice. It has a nice girth," and it was like, "It's eight inches," and it's you know, mm-hmm. everybody loves it, and it had five stars. No lie, you mm-hmm. had five stars. That's on some size. Bitch, queen. I got that mug. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nah, I'm not a size queen. Either. I don't want that. Because I be saying stuff, because people ask me dumb stuff like this. This one motherfucker, long, long time ago, long, long, long time ago, had asked me, did I want to have sex with his 11 inch penis? I said, and do what with it? Ooh, and then with no. thick too? Are you, cr- no, leave me alone. That is you know. nasty. And it, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> and then, but I have friends, but no, I have friends who will see 11 inch dick and their mouth will start to water. So I'm not knocking mm-hmm. anybody who with the shits. Hey, if you with the shits, I'll watch. I swear to God, I'll watch. But I'm not with the shits. You're not messing up my insides. I'm good. My pussy, I promise you, it's not 11 inches down there. It is fine. <laughs> it is this fine. Facts. Like, this is, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. want that. I don't want it. <laughs> that will mess up my life entirely. I don't want it. Hell yeah. Hey, sissy. Hmm? No, nah, I'm excited. What? Mm-mm, I'm just excited. Well, what you gotta share? You gotta share the details. Nah, I don't want to no more. What? <laughs> Niggas, man. I don't want to no more. <laughs> you can't start in this. Stop, man. No. Nah, nah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and yo, you know, I hate when people no do that too. But don't worry about it. Because I didn't mean to. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you have got to tell me. <sighs> like, you are almost obligated now because you done started. You guys to say what? Oh, so this is not what's on my mom, but it's close enough. So look, you remember? Uh, you know what? No, I don't <laughs> you remember the busted? <laughs> look, you remember the busted challenge where about somebody they butt game big and shit? Yeah. Did you see the first of all? That was cute. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitch is shaking her ass. But look, did you see the one uh, talking about Big Bank Challenge? No. So look, go on Twitter. Well, if you got Twitter, put hashtag Big Bank Challenge. And it's big bank. Yeah, like big bank challenge. Uh huh. So it's uh, I don't know who the person is. I don't know. Look, <laughs> I ain't got no details because all I did was watch the booty jiggle. So look, it's. <laughs> 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 and I, accident, I, I love my Twitter and I love the people that I follow. I love all of that because I see everything that's net. Anyway, <clears throat> so the big bank challenge or whatever. Uh-huh. It's nothing but guys. It's all guys, um, flamboyant to the nine. 
And it's just, it's so beautiful. It's so many nice booty shaking from these pretty ass masculine men, not so masculine men, all the in-betweeners, everybody. <laughs> like, but it's just, it's cute face, slim waist with a big bank. And by the time you say big Ooh. bank, yeah, by the time you say big bank, they turn around and you're supposed to jump and your booty jiggle, baby. Oh, I gotta watch this. Oh, yes, Lord. Because this is one, I think he a football player or something. I don't give a damn. His body, like, it was sculpted from the gods. I mean, good God. He was thick as hell, nice okay. ass. Yeah, nice ass thighs, nice ass booty. I don't give a fuck what team he played for, baby. That booty, everybody can enjoy. Okay? Because I was just like, okay. And that's what I think it is. I didn't give a damn. Because, I mean, I am who I am. I ain't even damn who booty it was. Booty is booty. That thing is noise. I was like, okay, you guys some nice booties. So yeah, if y'all were okay. into the whole drop, what is it, busted videos or whatever, they were all mm-hmm. nice and cute and pretty. Yay, shout out to the women who did it. But this big bank is all about them big booties on them fellas. So if you like big booties, okay. check it out. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. Because it's pretty fun. Definitely. That's all me all day. Definitely we'll be checking on dots. Don't we have a guest today? Yes. Okay, so for the last talk topic, we have a guest today. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, we got a guest. Because y'all know, I've recently <clears throat> discovered that, you know, it's not per se that women lack confidence, but we just don't know how to build the confidence in self in the bedroom, like before your partner even touches you. Like, how do you, you know, how do you hype yourself up? How do you get there? Because women don't just automatically turn on when it's time to have sex. Like, you know, we take about a good 15 to 20 minutes to to get our bodies, like, warmed up. You know how you go outside and warm your car? (laughs) I mean, well, that's you. I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. (laughs) Oh, I was about to say, that's that's, that's a solo thing. Because, like, your body, like, as a a woman, your body doesn't just be like, ooh, sex, all right, bing, ready to go. Like, no, you take a minute to get moist. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you got to get... And you got to preheat the oven current. before you put that bread in. Right, right, right. You got to preheat the oven before you just stick the buns in there. So, like, what, like, how do we get ourselves in that mood? How do we build that confidence to be like, you know, I'm in front of my partner. I'm doing the do, and I feel confident enough that I'm about to slay. Like, how do you even get there? Mm-hmm. So, I had to bring on... I had to bring on somebody that embodies the body positivity, mm. you know, that can kind of help us explain to the people what exactly she does to embody that confidence about self, you know, to get you mm. ready for that moment, that big O, because <laughs> you know you about to just put it down in the bedroom. This episode is brought to you by House of Boobs. Well, we sell everything boob except your bra, your one-stop shop for all your boob accessories. Be sure to visit us at www.houseofboobs.com. That's H-A-U-S-O-F-B-O-O-B-S.com. And I'm just telling y'all, I don't know nobody else that's more body positive and more confident in themselves than my girl, Savani Seduction. Like, I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> she be she there. Y'all go check I out the page. I appreciate that, babe. <laughs> I definitely appreciate that, babe. I mean, every time I see you, it's it's always about body positivity. You loving the skin you in, and that is greatly appreciated and greatly needed in today's time when all you see is like surgery bodies or you know big hips and big boobs, and women feel like that's what they need. But it's mm-hmm. it, you know it's not like being comfortable in your own skin and your own body is really what's needed. Everybody's not meant to look the same, but, you know, society is telling us that. So I definitely yeah. appreciate your efforts in that, you know, lifting our yeah. spirits from a distance. Yeah, because it's everything that you just said. And so many people see me, but they don't know that it was years that I didn't love myself. And like you said, I'm worrying about what the men are saying or I should be thicker or like you said, I, I thought about plastic surgery. But I'm like, first of all, bro. The side effects of all this, like, mm-hmm. is it worth it mm-hmm. to possibly be right back at my body? <laughs> right. Rejected. That's big. Fact. So it's just about 
it's just about learning to fall in love with yourself. Like people be looking at me, but that's why I say dance in the mirror, literally. Tell yourself you're beautiful. Uplift yourself. Like if you don't love yourself, how are you going to know how to love somebody else? That is very true. You got to love you first. That's why I'm, I'm really big on it and twerking, y'all. Big on that. Yes. <laughs> I love them twerk videos. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know I'm here for it. Right. Like, with you you're shaking your tits, I'll be here for it, too. Because <laughs> I love that about y'all, that y'all embrace it and y'all talk about women positivity and uplifting others. Like, that's what it's all about, spreading yeah. your light. Absolutely. And you said something very important, you know, dancing in the mirror and like just looking at yourself, being yourself. That's very important and building that confidence that you need, like before you even take it to adding someone else in the bedroom, like just embracing yourself and putting those positive words out there so that you not only, you know, see it, you feel it, you believe it, because saying Mm -hmm. it is something totally different than just seeing it. So, you know, okay. adding words to it and dancing in the mirror and just believing what you say, believing what you see, that that all adds into it. So that is a very good point. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. Like, it's, it's crazy. There was maybe, like, a smidget of a second during puberty where I wasn't fucking with me. But after that, I started fucking with me real, real heavy. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and it was funny that I fucked with me so heavy because I would have a friend who's, you know, nice little shape, nice little legs, whatever, whatever. And a dude would try to talk to me before her. And she'd be like, oh, first of all, <laughs> some of the shit she would say, I'd be like, oh, all right. But um, she'd be like, <laughs> right. she'd be like, she'd be like damn, he, should, he ain't even glance my way. I'm a thicker chick, all that other shit. However, first of all, I'm going to be awesome. And he felt my awesomeness radiating from within. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it would just be wild. But it's funny, I've met so many different body types so many different women from different backgrounds. So although, yes, you have to uplift yourself, please know that, baby girl, everybody goes through a sh- struggle when yes, it comes to like themselves. It's very rare that you meet somebody who say, I fuck with me, and they mean it. Because, you know, it sounds cute, right? Like, oh, I fuck with me, child. But really, secretly, you can't even look in the mirror for more than five minutes without finding a flaw somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like, you really got to fuck with you. Like, I really right. fuck with me. Like, it's, it's sometimes a little bad. Like, I can... I can literally be crying and having a bad day, and I look in the mirror, and be like, still cute though. Like, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, so. Sometimes you gotta do that, like, and then I'm sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. But now nah, you're right. You, I love it, and I love that there's so many women out here that are embracing that. It's yep. still, we say a lot. Let me let me scale that back. It's a lot more women embracing themselves. They're still yeah, because it won't always that way. Yeah, it's still a very small percentage of women who for real, for real embody and then love themselves. A lot of people just be lying and they be frauding. Let's just call it spade a spade. They do. Um, <laughs> like, let's just call it. And that's, Go ahead, mommy. That's why you got to... No, I, I love I love that because you are hitting that shit right on the head. Because I had said that even last night. I was like, some pictures I used to post, I was like... Yeah. It might have been a beautiful, you know, the most beautiful picture, but I was like, I felt like shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's why now, sometimes if I go, you know, give a little motivation or go loud, I'm in my fucking bonnet because that's how much I'm comfortable with my skin. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't give a fuck. If I can run out in the street, go to the store in my bonnet and sweat, why not do that on live? That's exactly. real life. Because people are attracted exactly. to confidence. Like, it's not even really, yeah. it don't even have to be that you, like, are the most fit person, you're the most healthiest person or whatever. Like, it's just the confidence that you bring about yourself that attract people to you. And we don't even mm-hmm. realize that. it's That's all it really is. Like, you can be, you know, you could be a two on a scale of one to ten, you know, thinking from judging, you know, from how everybody else judges you. You will be a two. But if you got the mm-hmm. confidence of a ten, people are not going to see you as a two. Mm-hmm. Right. Then, I mean, that's nice. But it's, it's funny because it's also on some shit. Like, i never forget, I was... This is a little pretty boy. That's what they called them. You know, mm-hmm. little yellow thing, little cat looking eyes, uh, all that shit. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, but, see, but see, that's not my style. Like, most of the meat I like is dark. You did. But however, mm-hmm. just um, <laughs> You dabbled. <laughs> but it was funny though, because a lot of the women in the office, they were all, oh my God, I want to show you so cute. Oh, I just want to drink his bath water. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> And so it was funny because people look at me like, yo, so for real, key. You trying to tell me if he tried to holler at you, you wouldn't take it? No, bitch. Number one, I said that's not my type. Right. Two, I literally fucking elite. <laughs> I feel like 
everybody, uh, how can I put it? Everybody is not for everybody. And once yeah. I realized that, that's when I stopped giving a fuck about other motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. drink my bath water. I mean, licking from head to toe, from hair nails to t- uh, toe, I mean, from toenails to hair follicles, you dig? How mm-hmm. <laughs> And then I'll see people who see me and be like, oh, nah, shawty, I ain't gonna hit her with a six-foot pole. And that's fun. So once I really have that, once you have that mindset that you're not meant for everybody, that's why everybody's not the same, shawty. So it's a dude that you thought was kind of attractive or that shorty that you thought was kind of cute. They ain't want to get you no play. That's fine. They smell funny anyway. Go on about your life. Exactly. <laughs> that's really what it is. <laughs> I love it. Yes. But that's so real though. Like for real, once you once you realize, like you said, that everybody ain't for everybody and you get this mm-hmm. whole aura of confidence within self, you really don't worry about what other people got going on. Yeah. Like you so be in your right. own lane and you be comfortable in that lane. Yes, Lord. And I wish that more people would learn that in 2021. Yeah. Mind your business. Okay. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. <laughs> and and I don't, and what gets me is, don't y'all have more of a headache when you worry about somebody else's life? Like, what mm-hmm. is it doing for you worry about somebody else's life? I just, I really don't understand it. I feel like, like, well, like it's all we, what we've been touching on with going back to confidence within themselves. Mm-hmm. Most people hate because they intimidate, some intimidates mm-hmm. that you're doing. Yep. Big facts. So it's, it's just crazy. That Big is facts. very true. <laughs> That's sad, bro. But it's all right, though. Once you get that self confidence, once you once you get that part right, then it's kind of easier to move into the okay. I'm feeling myself. You see what I see? You don't see what I see? Let me make sure that you see what I see because this right. thing is noise. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're gonna want that person to, <laughs> yes. to experience or like be included in that aura in that element that you got going on already. And it's just like you know, oh, I don't, I don't mind wearing lingerie for you, or mm-hmm. I don't mind lighting some candles and doing a little dance or whatever because I'm comfortable in my body, whether you like it or not. Yeah, but yeah. but like big facts with that, like <laughs> lingerie for me was just for me. Like I had lingerie mm-hmm. in my closet, and you would have thought either I was some kind of cam girl, sex mm-hmm. worker, or that I was just trying to load it up and make sure that whenever I get a partner, no fuck out of here. Your girl used to come home, live by myself, and uh, mm-hmm. girl wash, do the little body scrub, body butter, go on light a candle, put that lingerie on, roll up. And eat. You did. <laughs> Sitting there watching Insecure, okay, having a ball. <laughs> but <laughs> see, I, I love that you said that. Mm-hmm. I yeah. had to get there though. Mm-hmm. I, I did. Yeah, that's exactly mm-hmm. what I was gonna say. Yeah, like, but I got there. I got there through masturbation. I know that's. Yes. I don't know how that's gonna sound to people, but I got yes. there through masturbation. So when I first, because like I tell y'all all the time, all our listeners, I started kind of early when it came to masturbation. Once I found my little magic button, bitch, it was a wrap. That was all for me. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. once I started masturbating in front of the mirror. And I see my vagina get wet. I would see how she would like change and all this. Ugh, it was just fun. I was like, oh, I am a sexy motherfucker. But once I hit that, oh, it was a wrap. Mm-hmm. Now it was fun for me to put on a show when a show right. came. But I didn't need to put on a show for anyone else but myself because I was my own audience. Like, I know mm-hmm. I used to have a homegirl. She would laugh at me when I was like, go play with your pussy in front of your mirror. And she'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> you're so silly. I'm serious. Man, like, that's the biggest I'm confidence you. booster. <laughs> I've had that I've had that happen when I've told like I have a friend that will not touch herself like she swears up and down that she never masturbated and I I promise you and I'm just like bitch that is so unhealthy yes. Yes. oh no man because I love that you said doing it in the mirror because that it, that should excite me exactly. like you said like it will boost your confidence automatically even if you don't think it would like just seeing Hello? you in the act, seeing your <laughs> facial expression, seeing how your body reacts. Like, oh my God, you'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. And then I know people Wait. don't do it. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> oh. Be like, need a nigga for what? Okay. I'm, oh, I'm saying make a whole movie. What? Like, okay, one, okay, go on, okay. Look confession session. Y'all don't tell nobody. <laughs> one time. <okay. laughs> One time, your girl, I I used to date myself before I got into a relationship. And I still mm-hmm. sort of take myself out on dates or whatever. But I used to, for real, court me. Like, I was, it was almost like I was going to eat my own pussy, you did. So I would literally hmm. come home. 
uh, take a shower. Like I said, take a shower, do my, do my little butter fry, little butter butter, all the other stuff. Put on my lingerie. This wasn't the insecure nights. This was the we about to get it popping nights. I would put on, you know, Neo. <laughs> you remember Neo Mirror? Oh, you know how yes. You the mirror? Both. Oh, yeah. That's the that's in front one. of the mirror is really my shit. And once I found it, I can't stop. Like, I have big mirrors in my house. And people are like, oh my God, you just love looking at yourself. Yes, I do. <laughs> Do you have one over your bed? Because you sound like you getting really excited. That's what I want. One over my bed. You got one over your bed yet? Baby, not yet. But when I say I've been looking at it because I just <laughs> bought my house, Paula Lou, and I'm about to go and get it installed. <laughs> yeah, you sound like you about to get your 50 shades of gray. Right. Ready, every day. Oh, well, all the shades. Ain't, the, ain't just gray, baby. We going to all the cats. <laughs> but, that, but that's, I know that's, right. that's so key, though, because you found what works for you. And mm-hmm. what works for you mm-hmm. is a mirror session. What works for mm-hmm. me is like lighting candles, walking through the house in lingerie. Like that works for me. That's okay. my body, that's my confidence. Like, mm-hmm. I, like I said, I had to get there because it wasn't talked about, so I didn't know to do it. You know what that's I mean? Like people don't right. talk about having that self session. They always talk about mm-hmm. partner things or. They always mm-hmm. talk about how you need to keep your appearance up to look this way for other people. But it's like, if you do it for self, it actually increases your mm-hmm. mood. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It makes you feel better about you. So once the, those dots connected for me, oh, it was it was on from there. Uh, but, th- you know, that that's me. My, lin- my lingerie <laughs> is me. Your mirror is you, you know? Yeah. Dancing yeah. and twerking is Savani's thing. That's her, hey. you know? <laughs> like, you got to find it for you. Hey, I got a question. Do y'all ever, do y'all watch Big Mouth? Y'all know that show, Big Mouth on Netflix. Do y'all watch that? I do. I've, I've watched it a few so times, but people keep telling me that I should watch it more. So so hit me to it. Okay. All right. So it's this part. I think it's either, I think it's on the newest mm-hmm. season and um, they're going right through people and stuff like that. And so the boy, he's talking about his masturbation uh, ritual. Oh, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so he's talking about, <laughs> my bad. I hate when people do that every talking and laughing, but it really is funny. And it's cute. <laughs> so it's really, it's like he's talking about I check to make sure the door's locked. I check <laughs> it again. <laughs> 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 and it made me I love that show because it takes you back to a time that no, like you said, you do nobody talks about it. Mm-hmm. But I'm my button very early. So it used to be times I would lock the door, play with my button, look at the door again. All right, it's still locked. I don't know why I thought it was going to unlock magically. Or I did not the volume real, real low. <laughs> <laughs> Being paranoid, that's all. <laughs> did you go get caught? Right. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yes, that paranoia <laughs> set in something serious. Hey. Oh, and I don't even know why, but it, I, I used to be for it. Let me check the door. But okay, so my question is, what is what if you do have one, what is your masturbation ritual? If you have Ooh. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to say I, I do like the candles to set the mood. The sense, uh, the smell makes it more sensual. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even fruits, like, because I feel like you can do that with the mm. partner, but I don't know. Something about eating fruit with the lights down low. It's eternal. I don't need nobody around. Okay. Oh, can I? I like okay. that one. I'm about to try that. Yeah, I'm okay. telling you. you know, the way I do eat my mango is a little, a little nasty. My juice is going to run my lap. You know what I'm saying? Get a little, little peaches, a little syrup <laughs> put on that thing. Or, or honey. I like honey with peaches. Mm-hmm. Or honey yeah. with mango. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, that is hot. That's hot. I actually want to go right. food like that. With some honey all over me, but we, we can talk about that later, y'all. That's just nasty. <laughs> it's going to be a little sticky, sticky after, sticky. but it'll be worth it. Right. <laughs> It'd be worth it, Chad. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we got the water flow. I'm sorry, baby. What's <laughs> Come on now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like that though. <laughs> but do, okay, so I know for no, me, like, we, even if you're not all the way in the act, if somebody's like doing like, I'll say sexting or like dirty talk, mm-hmm. that kind of gets me in the mood. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of like pre-games mm-hmm. me. So that when I'm now, when I'm near you, you know, we done already got the little stuff out the way because we've been sexting or we've been dirty talking or, you know, sending voice messages and stuff like that. That gets me in the mood. Mm-hmm. We getting the queen. You know, by the time I get to the bedroom, I'm ready to go. <laughs> nah, my dirty talk, my dirty talk a little too dirty. Like, it getting muddy with my dirty talk. <laughs> If I'm dirty talking to you, you need to be on the way. Like, we can't have no eight-hour session. Like, we can't be at work sexting all day. 
it need to be 30 minutes, last 30 minutes of your shift so you can be on the way. I feel you because oh, yeah, oh, yeah. the hours like that shit gonna piss me off. Like, I'm gonna be horny, they get yeah, attitude. <laughs> 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 I mean, like the whole mood this way. By the time you get home, I don't even want it no more. Put some cold. I'm about to go to sleep. I'm tired. Thanks, I'm like nigga, you talked about it too long at this point. Fuck you. <laughs> I don't want to got one off in the bathroom. I ain't no more. Period. I just shoot them things off like this. I ain't got time. You feel like my face. So yeah, but my my dirty talk. <sighs> I'm just so nasty. Sometimes I had to catch myself though, because I be saying some shit to my partner, and they be like, "What? You mean it?" They when I my my partner pretty nasty too. So if I say something and that motherfucker is stump stump for a minute, oh, okay, too too nasty. You remember most scary movie that was too dirty? Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Let me really. Bad. But you gotta have a partner that matches you sexually too, though. Exactly. That's very important because. Oh, yeah. I can't always be bringing stuff to the table and, I, and then you be sitting there like, what? You really want to do that? I don't know. No, I got to have you be like, okay, let's go. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, I got to say that. Even if they not like on your level as far as try, like have done it, be open-minded to at least try mm-hmm. it once. Mm-hmm. That's that you can say that. Yeah, because uh, you ain't exactly. got to do everything because, you know, sometimes... Right, no. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want you to say you done done everything that I, like, I bring up or I done done everything that you bring up. No, let's be willing to try some stuff together. Mm-hmm. Don't just downplay it because I bring it up or don't just say no automatically because, you know, it's not what you think you should do. Right, because it's just... Just be mm-hmm. open-minded. It's just like food, like... Tomato, tomato, something you gonna like. I ain't gonna like. <laughs> like, nigga, is you willing to try something new or not? Because you know, it's like, like y'all saying, open mind and be adventurous. Like, because mm-hmm. now I'm pretty fucking born, mm-hmm. and you just gonna say no to everything. Amen. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> hey, I just man. recently tried to have me fucking weak, y'all. All right. Mm. I was on my cycle. This is the first time I personally tried it because I had. Whatever, if y'all ever heard this shit, whack ass partners in the past, they wouldn't want to try shit or they'll be like, oh, that's too much. This and the third. Mm-hmm. Been there. I'm like, I'm on my cycle. I'm like, let me suck your dick, whatever, you know? I was like, watch porn mm-hmm. with it, though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's my bag, girl. See, yes. I didn't, I've, I love I've messed with, with, like, we watched it before, you know, before mm-hmm. for foreplay, but that shit get boring. Who did, we done that shit fucking high school. Like, that shit wagging right. with it. So it was really exciting, y'all. Like, it was really so exciting. <laughs> right. I'm glad you did that. Because, yes, it does help you set, keep the mood going. Like, if you've already set the mood, but to, like, have it playing in the background, oh, you're going to keep it going. And it's going to... You'll be surprised how many times, like, you can you can release, your partner can release, and then y'all will still be going at it because the mood is still there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The only thing I ask yeah, my, like, I nigga, don't that. drop the phone on my head. Oh no! <laughs> oh, sure. Nah, like the first time I ever watched a porno with my partner, well, and I was doing something, mm-hmm. was when the girl was sucking dick or whatever. I mean, she was she was on that thing, and I was, and you know, I'm a competitive motherfucker, so I'm looking at her and I'm like, okay, how she she uh huh, and she okay, watch this there. I'm gonna do this. Watch, I can do it. Watch me do it. Bo, best head session I've given in my adult life. It was dope. Like Word, my 20-year-old no. life. Yeah. Because it's almost like a... How can I put it? It's... Because my skills, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gawk, gawk already. However, uh-huh. when it was... When you... When I had that mindset, like, it's just... She not gonna beat me. Like, I don't know who this heifer is, but I don't care. I'm gonna beat her on this thing and just get as nasty as she was. Like, the more spin you uh-huh. the big, the sloppier I got, God damn it. Like, it was... It was nasty. We was in for real competition. Now, my partner is so, just looking at me and... What? Oh, right. Yeah. It, was like, <laughs> it really was. Because the nasty she got, the nasty I got, then the more he, oh shit. Yeah, fuck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Right. Look, it's all never... shits and the fucks and the way they grab you and the toes curling off of that turn you on. Yes, and y'all, and y'all I be... love the responses. Like, responses Thank keep you. me going. Like, I, I, I cannot stand a silent session. Like, keep going. Keep talking. Yeah. Like, you know, let me know I'm doing it right. If, if you silent the whole ready, time, mm-mm. 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 I can't be sucking dick and you quiet. Because first right. of all, I know my skills are impeccable. So now I feel like you're trying me. Right. Then, right. <laughs> I don't feel that. Right. Like, nigga, come on now. You can get the fuck out of this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know you didn't do that well. 
Bitch, if my jaw hurt and you ain't saying nothing, oh, you can leave. <laughs> you are so disrespectful. Right? Long jaw, like a motherfucker. He's sitting there looking dumb. <laughs> But I'm okay. barely breathing, trying to, like breathe out, trying to breathe out of my nose, and your ass not appreciative. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, two seconds from death, and you still ain't moaning. <laughs> so for fellas who are listening, please know, or anybody else, all the penis owners, if they are sucking your dick, you need to give them some kind of boost of confidence. Hand clap, something. Mm-hmm. Like that. If you mute, Even if, time, you, if it's just a head grip. Them. Something. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, that's true though. And I'm glad Body. y'all said it because I hate when a nigga said, oh, her pussy was dry this and third. Like, what did you do to try to arouse her? Or was she trying everything? Because mm-hmm. that would turn us all niggas. Yes. Talk about it. Come on, Nasavani. That <laughs> that really blows me the same thing for certain females. Cause that's why I always tell people, mm-hmm. like, of course I'm gonna reach out to females because I am, but I be like, men don't get it twisted because it's fuck girls out here too. Like, oh, what is yeah. what is she doing yeah. for you? Like it's okay. Yeah, I hate exactly. a bitch that's talking about she don't suck dick. Not saying that you oh. gotta go suck everybody, but you gonna know when the vibes right. are right when you can trust that person. Exactly. Even yeah. have some massage and all of that. Mm-hmm. that well, second, get good for your airways. It get it clear. It, it is. It <laughs> clear your sinuses and everything. It really do. <laughs> That's a mission. I feel, look, I feel more vocal. I feel like I can talk a little louder, project a little better after. I do. Right. <laughs> Word, though. <laughs> oh, man. Like she said, she was radiated earlier. Give me a little more to my melanin glow. You know, all that good shit. Ooh, right, yeah. exactly. It's helping my skin out. Everything. Day. Oh, oh, y'all. That that made me feel about this. Uh, made me think about this time I met. Made me think about this damn this gay boy was telling me. He said, "Man, I saved my man's sperm. What you talking about?" He said, "It's good for the skin." Like I've always heard that, but just to run uh-huh. into somebody that actually does it. How do y'all feel about that? Yeah. Would y'all so try he it? A he really oh, does. Yeah. See, I've heard that too, though. That is good for the skin. They say if you rub it on your face, it actually moisturizes Wait, who your skin. It? It gives you a glow, but I've never saved it to do it. Like if it land on my skin, yeah, okay, cool. But oh, no, like to save it, it and actually apply it later, no. I mean, I'm nasty. I like when it hit my skin. But what I'm saying, but like <laughs> saving it though, <laughs> but, <laughs> saving it though, like putting it in a little jar. Nah, I'm not. And what right. is it? That's the only thing I would ask. Like, has this nut been certified? Like, is it clean nut? Do we know that this nut is clear? Because if I put it on my skin and it starts burning, I'm fighting. Something. Right, like what's that? What's that? That TikTok? Like, what are you eating? What did you drink right, today? Right. Like, how many fruits? Did like, you my is, if it's nut cream for your face, I just need all the ingredients, like including what he ate that day before he came in the cup. Like, what did he? I need all of right. it. <laughs> and I'm a, everything y'all saying, and I should have asked them, but I ain't gonna lie. Like, I mean, we just talked about sex, but calm, calm y'all. Or completely. So I was like, the fact that you save it is what I'm still stuck on. <laughs> like, like y'all said, if it touches your skin, you know, we used to go get a towel or something. I don't even think to rub it in my skin then. Oh, really? But, mm-hmm. Oh, see, mm-hmm. I do. I'll rub it in then. It depends on how nasty I'm being. Because again, sometimes I, like, okay, y'all, for real, for real. I keep telling y'all I'm nasty and I think we be laughing behind it. But no. <laughs> Look, let's go get my notepad. Like, don't get me wrong. It's you know, I'm not walking around with a nutty nutty ball. You know what I'm saying? Ain't ain't nutty face. But at the same time, <laughs> I really, really for real be in my bag. And he'd be like, Yeah, come on my face, come on my titties. Ah, let's do it. Like, mm-hmm. let's come on. And like, how much come you got? I got a whole lot of body. Like, it's just okay. Because I need something from the inside and the outside. In that aspect, I will rub it in though. I won't like automatically wipe it off. Just rub it in just a little bit, a little moisturizer, and keep it going. And then, you know, put a hot rag on your face, let it see. I was about to say, yeah, because it will stick up on your ass now, don't it? Don't goddamn just leave it there. Because <laughs> that's what well, right. I guess I'm going to take y'all tips because it's been times like I might have patted with, t- uh, I'm waking up with the little cum spots all over me. And I was just be like, oh, okay. You got to say hot red. Yeah, alleviate that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got my mm-hmm. notepad for real. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm taking no shit. <laughs> I love reaching out to women that's just like me. Shit. Hit me for some shit. Help me open up a little right. more. The world needs some us. Indubitably, because I already got a um, pen note for me to try fruit with honey with the lights down. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, real game. Like, I'm definitely trying to, like, this week. 
girl. And it's funny because although I have a partner, I'm so still, like, I'm still in love with me. Like, and I'm mm-hmm. falling back in love with me because I kind of lost that with my partner. But then once I recognized it, I was like, oh, fucks, no. Because mm-hmm. I've been rocking with Kifa a minute. Like, since the day I was born, she had my back. So let me go ahead and make sure she's straight. Yeah, I fuck with you. Yeah, I love you. Mm-hmm. Right. But I need to make sure she's straight. And the good thing about my partner, and I appreciate it, that motherfucker's like, oh, well, yeah, get back on track if that's what you feel like. I, I mean, I don't know what you mean that's by off track because I fuck with you. But hey, whatever you need to do to make sure that you're right, I fuck with it. This made me want to drop to my knees and suck this nigga dick. Because that's, right. <laughs> that's the kind of support that you want from a nigga. Like, if, yeah, if you yeah. your partner and say, yo, I'm about to go on a date with myself, and that nigga flip, that ain't the one for you. <laughs> nope. You need to leave immediately. <laughs> I love that you said that. Go ahead, mommy. No, I was just gonna say I love that you're honest about that too, because so many people are scared to admit that. And that's one thing that when my boyfriend and I got together, we only been together about four months. But when we got together, he was like, I just don't want us to lose lose each other and you know, lose ourselves and each other, brother. Of course. Yeah. Because he said it's been times that he's done that. And I'm like, nigga, it's been times that I've done that. I said, but I feel like mm-hmm. both of our mindsets are at the same wavelength. Mm, that matters. And, that matters. It does. And we're so equivalent. He's doing this and that, and I'm doing this and that. So it's like we balance. We don't have to be up under each other's ass and shit because that's not going to get us the money. That's not going to get us the bag. Mm-hmm. Hell nah. Y'all can be irritated. Mm-hmm. Ready to go at each other's throats. Fact. Fact. So I like it. I love that. I love that because I feel like we never will lose sight, honestly, just because we came in like that. I've never had somebody tell me no shit like that. That's uh-huh. beautiful. I it love makes that. All the money. Difference. Yo, all the positive vibes and love to that. I love that. Seriously. I appreciate that. Me too. For real, for real. And don't, and you know what? I love when women can talk about relationships with other women and, excuse me, and there's no malice or no ill intent behind it because I don't know what it is. Like even, let's say I'm having a good day with my relationship. For I don't mm-hmm. necessarily want to go out and tell someone I'm having a good day with my relationship because it's so, it's always some type of negative energy behind it. Not always, but it's, oh, yeah. it's pre-assumed, like it's assumed that there's going to be some type of negative energy or some type of bad juju on it or or something. So somebody's just going to say something that throws yeah. the, the, the energy off. I like yeah. Yeah. now type shit. Like I hate, I remember getting in my relationship now. I'm five years in and this, and somebody I began remember at the beginning was like, oh, enjoy all the cute stuff now. He ain't going to be that sweet now. I just had this conversation with this nigga two weeks ago. The one I just had and he's still the sweetest motherfucker in the world. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? Like, I will never, never right. ever diss someone in their relationship. So that's why I'm just, I'm super into love. I am a big advocate for love. So I baby, love I, I hope, and I am putting all the good vibes on that. Like, I love to hear that. I love to hear strong yeah, couples starting off strong. Like, that's that's the good shit. Like, you want to be mentally mm-hmm. clear on the same wave, digging mm-hmm. each other. Like, that's beautiful. That's a good thing. nigga be like, be like, arguing or not, I'm not sleeping on the couch and I ain't going nowhere. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine for that. <laughs> Thanks, indeed. <laughs> we definitely thank you for vibing with us today. You got to tell the people where to catch Y'all can catch follow my at. personal page at Savani. That's C-I-V-O, two N's and two E's. And then my podcast is Savani Seduction, where I'm here to seduct you with sex, body, positivity, and just fucking life. That's C I V O N N E E S C E D U C T L N. Yes, I switched the S from a C to make it look extra cute. Follow me. <laughs> and it's because she hella dope. <laughs> and we have an event coming up if you are in the RVA area coming up February 27th. Speaking to building confidence in the bedroom. If you're having this issue, you know, that could be one of your goals for your sex vision board this year. So come on out. Thank February you, ladies. 27th. The information is. Thank you, ladies. Y'all don't even know. Uh, times I be tuning in. Y'all shit talking. But vibing with. Well, I already didn't vibe with my, my girl, Boozy. But Kita, girl, <laughs> like, yes. you need to bring hey. your ass to Richmond. Like, I feel like a girl's night of all of us coming <laughs> on something. Love the vibe. Oh, oh, I'm with it. Look, now that they didn't, um, they didn't fucked up and gave me a starter job, but that mean I can do whatever I want sometimes. Oh yeah, I'm with it, y'all. <laughs> and a mess up, y'all keep me updated, it. please. <laughs> oh, sure, of course, sure. of course. Thank you so much for vibing with us. I really, really enjoyed your energy and yes. please come back. I know. I just want to Anytime, yes, yeah. we're gonna definitely be in connection. Anything I can post or vice versa, you know, to cross promote, please let me know. I have no problem posting on my page. 
And that's for both of y'all. Oh, you yeah. are big boy facts. She <laughs> is like that, y'all. And on that note, we out. Night, Night.